Tonight, 7.30 can reveal police intelligence showing that sovereign citizens are also taking root in Australia. I challenge the jurisdiction of the court. You have no jurisdiction. You're free to leave the court. No, you are a traitor and a criminal. Under under no, this is the stop. My name's David Holpern and I was a magistrate for 21 years. Prior to that, I was a lawyer for 10 years. I retired a couple of years ago and uh, now I practice with Barefoot Law and I'm in-house lawyer for a not-for-profit organisation as well and uh, I live here at Myokum. And a great spot it is too, David. Great to speak to you. And on an issue that's been troubling me uh, very much of late, uh, two incidents over the last week where I've gone into a shop and then uh, customers come in, refused to uh, wear a mask and then created a whole scene when they were told that they had to wear a mask in order to come into the, the food establishment. They created a whole scene and went on about being a sovereign citizen and that they would be discriminated against. Now, I understand this isn't you. You've come across this a lot in your lifetime as a magistrate and working in law. Tell us about these arguments and your experience with them over the years. Sure. Well, I think really over the last 10 years of my work as a magistrate, I was based in Lismore, every week... Uh, there would be a person claiming sovereign citizenship and saying that the laws of the road or laws of family law or other laws just don't apply to them because they've taken various steps to uh, be declare themselves or sign forms that uh, or so-called contracts, uh, unilateral, that means one-way contracts, that remove them from the encompass of the law. And they would say, therefore, they're allowed to drive. And they would also talk in a very strange language where I am not the person known as. They would challenge my authority as a magistrate and indeed the entire criminal or legal system as a corporation that they weren't part of. So where do these ideas come from? It's interesting because obviously it, it's become the topic of several really lengthy judgments and academic reports uh, that magistrates and judges called for because here we were being confronted with something that was quite unusual. And so uh, I wrote some papers on it and uh, so did others. And there's a couple of terrific judgments from its place of origin, which is the deep south of the United States of America, where essentially uh, racist right wing straw man movement uh, started whereby people created this idea of them not being members of community and declaring themselves not to be bound by the laws of where they uh, where they live and it's and it was essentially because they didn't like the laws uh, as things changed and became more liberal and for example segregation ended um, and voting rights for uh, black people occurred so uh, it was it is born out of that movement out of the right wing uh, racist movement from the south of the United States I haven't worn a mask yet I'm not wearing it today besides despite what you guys do up here today I'm not wearing one tomorrow I was born free I will stay free my rights come from God, not from you. I'm not wearing it. You're going to have to hold me down and put it on me. Well, I'm told it's huge in the US. And let's go through some of their core beliefs. So some of the core beliefs are the government is illegitimate. It's a corporation. They never consented to these contracts that gives them power, that gives the governments power over them and the laws that governments pass, uh, that you've got to have a licence to drive a motor vehicle, it's got to be registered, and so on and so on and so on. Well, these core beliefs come from an essential mistake in understanding uh, things about the law. You don't have to consent to the criminal laws of the state or the Commonwealth applying to you. It's it's a really basic mistake to say, well, if I don't consent, then the laws don't apply to me. And if you think about it logically, for one second, you realise that it is a mistake. I mean, uh, the laws apply to you by virtue of the fact that the laws apply to you. And there's no opt-out or opt-in process when it comes to criminal law. You're either part of it uh, because of your birth, or you're part of it uh, by virtue of the laws themselves. 
So any of their legal arguments, do any of their legal arguments have any legal basis whatsoever here in Australia? I, I want to be very clear and very emphatic about this. There is absolutely no legal basis for any of their core beliefs. Uh, none. Uh, zero. An offence, everything you rely upon, there's no certificate of proclamation. It doesn't comply with Imperial Acts. It does okay. not comply Listen, with Imperial... I'm leading Senior Constable Farron from Hornsby Police. Okay, okay, so you... I've already warned you... No, you, you haven't you warned me. I'm not committing any offence. I'm not committing any offence. I'm not committing any offence. I've warned you that you may. Does so an do offence... Is the act you're relying upon have a certificate of proclamation? The closest I think we've come to the law taking a whole lot of steps back and going back to very basics is terra nullius and the Mabo decision. But that is infinitesimal uh, step back in time to change things in comparison to what these people are arguing. And all of those core beliefs that you just mentioned are complete gobbledygook, utter rubbish and have no basis in law whatsoever. If they did... Of course, we would have we would have seen it by now in reported judgments or cases or legislative response or any of those. But it is an absolutely fundamental error that is being made by the people who are proponents of sovereign citizens that there is anything like the existence in law of of sovereign citizens. It's just complete garbage. It's a condition of entry of our stores. Then that's discrimination, and I can have you sued personally for discriminating against me as a woman. We're not discriminating against anyone. You it's are. It's a condition of entry to all bunnies. It's not. Right it's an unlawful condition of entry. It is in breach of the 1948 Charter of Human Rights to discriminate against men and women. We're not trying to discriminate. What about discrimination? Is it a breach of the 1948 Charter of Human Rights, as they say? Well, it's an interesting thing. I think the... There's a mistake that people make when they troll through charters of international rights, that those things, that just because Australia is a signatory to them, means that they apply as law in the country. There needs to be an enabling piece of legislation to trigger those international covenants and international agreements application within the state or Commonwealth sphere. And, for example, uh, charters of human rights have a lot of principles, they have a lot of, uh, of recommendations, and Australia has signed them. And that doesn't mean that they're the gospel law in Australia. So, for example, we have signed human rights declarations about the rights of children, the rights of children to be housed, the rights of children, etc. But that doesn't stop the government locking up refugees, children refugees, um, because even though we've signed these, we haven't enacted them. And in fact, we've enacted laws contrary to them. And if there's a battle between a law that's enacted and some international covenant or agreement we're a signatory to... The law that's been enacted wins hands down every time. So just to be clear once again, all of their arguments that they make, have they all been fully tested in Australian courts? Uh, Absolutely they have. Not only have they been tested, they have been thrown out at every level, at local court, at district court, at supreme court, at high court, in the federal jurisdiction, in the federal magistrates court, in the federal court, and again in the high court, in tribunals around Australia as well, like NCAT within New South Wales or QCAT within Queensland. They have been thrown out every single time they've been raised. And I I go periodically to the websites where... Uh, this uh, material is discussed and I've read the claims of some of the organisations that say we've represented this person and they had a win because they didn't need a driver's licence in Victoria. It's all utter garbage. And when you go looking for the in- the actual cases or any real reported decisions, I'm not talking about anecdotal reports, I'm talking about decisions that are reported in the law reports, they're not there. They just don't exist. And uh, there is a great fraud taking place against the community on these websites that claim that sovereign citizenship works in courts around the country because it never has, it never will, and it doesn't. 
What do you mean by fraud? What is going on here? Well, I've seen websites where they're charging people for so-called sovereignty kits, where people pay money. Uh, They get a kit that enables them or gives them the tools to declare themselves and sign the binding contracts and challenge the constitutional ability of courts to make their determinations and indicate that they're not part of the corporation. Um, These kits are worthless, are completely valueless, and to pretend that they uh, give anybody the ability uh, to win court cases is fraudulent in the sense that it is taking money from people for nothing. So there's some people or some groups making money out of this? Oh, yes. Yes, there certainly are. Um, They claim to have results in court and they claim that if you give them money for their kits and buy their books and read their material and download their uh, their examples, then you can get off your get off these criminal or other charges. All right, so do you have anything with your name on it, ma'am? Would you mind having a look at that notice? Do you have anything with your name on it? Would you mind having a look at that yes. notice? I've issued you with a notice, mate. Do you understand in Queensland that as a person operating a motor vehicle, you're and required to have a Do you understand license? that we have common law rights? Okay. Ma'am, are you refusing to produce your driver's licence? Is that what I'm understanding? Do you understand that I don't have to answer any of your questions if you read that? Okay. Now, that is a legal document. Look, you mentioned Marbo briefly before. I wanted to ask you about how these sovereign peoples, their arguments, how that differs very much so from the Aboriginal sovereignty issue here in Australia, because our First Nations people never consented to having their land and country taken from them, of course. So it would seem that they've got a much stronger argument to make that the laws that are imposed on them in this country shouldn't apply to them. Uh, can I start, um, premise my comments on that by saying that uh, I deplore the overrepresentation of Aboriginal people, particularly in our criminal justice system. Uh, deaths in custody are an absolute disgrace. And uh, were, uh, I would and have done uh, a lot of work in this area over the years, including uh, more than a decade with the Aboriginal Legal Service. Uh, I think that my record on the bench uh, where I initiated circle sentencing Uh, It stands for itself. I've also spoken at Black Lives uh, Matter rallies, um, and I'm a real supporter of increasing Aboriginal rights uh, and treaty and sovereignty. Having said that, I also represented uh, Dennis Walker all the way to the High Court of Australia, arguing that the criminal laws of Australia of New South Wales uh, did not apply and that they had never consented to it. And just like uh, Terra Nullius was a legal fiction, so it was a legal fiction that the criminal law applied to Aboriginal people without a treaty sovereignty or or a sovereignty agreement. Dennis Walker uh, was the uh, son of uh, Ujiru Nunakul, then known as Alice Walker, uh, the poet. Um, He was living, he was visiting Nimbin and there was a battle over some trees being cut down in in Alsop Park. Um, That ended up Uh, at the back of the Rainbow Cafe and he got into an altercation with a police officer. Um, They they wrestled and he got the police officer's gun. He fired the gun uh, over the police officer's head, emptied the gun, in fact, over the police officer's head. Um, He was charged with a range of really serious offences, as you can imagine, and I represented him at the local court and at the district court and on. And I can say that we lost every step of the way. We lost in the magistrate's court, in the district court, and even though I didn't represent him uh, in the later in the later courts, he also lost in the Supreme Court and eventually in the High Court. And that case remains the uh, leading decision uh, that says that the criminal laws of New South Wales and Australia apply to Indigenous people, uh, First Nations people, despite the fact that um, they did not enter into a treaty um, and despite the fact that they did not consent to their sovereignty being removed. Is there any chance that that will be overturned in future? I would say no, Um, uh, not on that basis. But, of course, that doesn't mean that, uh, that it doesn't involve a bit of legal fiction. I think it still does. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not worth uh, pressing for change. I think it does. 
Uh, but in terms of how the law is right now, um, uh, Aboriginal people are bound, First Nations people are bound by the laws uh, of New South Wales, be they criminal laws or otherwise. And once there's a treaty, I expect that to be formalised. Mm. So the treaty is the resolution to all of this? Well, I think it's the formalisation of it um, and the the legal resolution of it. But for all practical purposes, and I've had First Nations people arguing before me that the criminal laws don't apply to them. Um, that was in, for example, a domestic violence case. Um, I, I found against them, based on the High Court decision that uh, that I was uh, that I was uh, at the start of, uh, because it was binding on me as a court, and it is binding on on everyone except perhaps the High Court at some time in the future. But let's just be clear: if the laws relating to domestic violence were suddenly removed from First Nations people, uh, I think that would create some real problems for. Um, victims of domestic violence. Mm. That's not going to practically happen any time soon. Mm. Uh, not not on, uh, not in my lifetime. Mm. So, if Aboriginal people have had no luck uh, in arguing that they uh, are not bound or shouldn't be bound by our laws, then these sovereign citizen people have no hope whatsoever. Somewhere between none and Buckley's. Well, I want you to explain, to try and explain to me, why is it that so many progressively minded people up here are taking up a lot of these views without fully realising where these ideas come from? I think we're all after quick fixes um, and we're all disillusioned with the way society is going and our role in it. And that's one of the reasons we all live in, in this beautiful North Coast uh, island because we we do want change and we see a lot of wrong in the world so i think people are attracted to quick fixes and this looks attractive it looks um, as though it could work but i do uh, i agree with you it's quite bizarre that so many lefty progressive greeny people uh, which i include myself seem so attracted to something that has its roots in such uh, such bigotry and uh, I do. I find it extraordinary. I, I'm yet to find myself uh, underestimating uh, people's um, ability to convince themselves that something's right, even when it's not. We we are a place that that argues the toss, and good on people for raising. So I'm not I'm not saying, you know, what silly people go away. Uh, these things need to be challenged, but people's lives are ruined by it. And I saw many people claiming sovereign citizenship in court who ended up serving long sentences of, in jail, who ended up losing their houses, losing their families, because they wouldn't budge from their belief in their righteousness over the application of the law. And it's a bit like the song, I Fought the Law and the Law Won. The, this belief, it's all very well to challenge things and, and uh, have different views and write about them, but uh, please don't think you are actually ever going to win when you go to court on a sovereign citizen argument, because you're not. Mm.